On the news tonight, Adeleke wins its polling unit as APC claims strongholds of Aregbe Shola and Akonde. EFCC arrests at least three for votes buying in Osho State election. And Yaga Africa threatens to expose those involved in electoral malpractice. Many thanks for joining us on News Now. I am Folashadi Ogrindi. The candidate of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, in the governorship election in Ocean State, Adimola Adeleke, has won his polling unit. Adeleke defeated Boyega Oyetola, candidate of the All Progressives Congress, APC, to win polling unit 009, Ward 02, Abogunde, and then North LGA. The PDP standard bearer polled 218 votes, while Oyetola, the incumbent governor, secured 23 votes. Also, B.C. Akonde, a chieftain of the APC-1, is polling unit for the ruling party. Operatives of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, have arrested at least three suspects for, to, for vote buying in the ongoing Ocean governorship election. The anti graft agency said on Saturday that through actionable intelligence and digital means, its personnel apprehended the suspects who were captured allegedly trading votes for cash. Some of the suspects were arrested around what 2, Unit 2, Ifelo Street, District, Isale Oshun, in Oshobo, the state capital. The commission further explained that it will immediately charge the suspect to court and begin the process of prosecuting them. All counting and sorting of votes are still ongoing in most parts of Oshun State, southwest Nigeria, as electorates trooped out en masse to elect their governor for the next four years. A large turnout of voters was recorded with the exercise now being commended by the electorates. Meanwhile, there has been no report of electoral violence throughout the state as the citizens are patiently waiting for the announcement of the result. I've been here since 7 o'clock a.m. this morning. What's your observation? Ah, fine, fine, fine. The INEC, the officials on ground, I think uh, the work is moving fine. I appreciate it. Are you ready to vote? If that very well, very much ready. Uh, with uh, what I've seen so far, there are a lot of voters. I feel they, they have known that uh, today is their day. Or she must decide. And there is no problem with uh, once there is uh, regularities that make this place to be peaceful and free and fair. I think there will be no problem within this particular area. Now for the latest update of the Ocean State Governorship election, TV360 correspondent Jide Olanira joins me live from Ocean State. Uh, thank you very much, Jide, for joining us. Now what more can you tell us about the election so far? Yes, thank you very much. Uh, the election has gotten to the crunch time now. You, um, right now I'm at uh, the Independent National Electoral Commission office and um, uh, this is the collation center. Um, people have started uh, trooping in for uh, the collation, and uh, this will eventually lead to the announcement of uh, the winner of this uh, gubernatorial election. And uh, just before we came into uh, the INEC office, we visited uh, some polling unit for the last time where we saw um, some of these. Um, uh, the, so we saw that counting started and uh, of course some of, we sent in some of these reports to show how uh, they, in this polling unit uh, they counted the votes and uh, eventually uh, the various agents of the parties involved had to sign before 
um, the electoral officer or the presiding officer had to take the, elect, uh, the, the resource sheet down to the local government's collation center. So right now, um, they are taking the ele um, election uh, resource sheet rather to the various uh, uh, local government's collation center from where they will uh, proceed to where we are, which is the INEC office, uh, before a collation proper and announcement will start. But as it is, um, the election has been fair, it's been uh, peaceful so far, and um, we are expecting for uh, the various uh, uh, residing officers to start coming in to uh, present their results. Now, Jide, tell us, how soon should we expect um, the result of the election? Well, I can't really say um, how soon the, the, we, uh, this result will be coming in because gradually, uh, like I said, some uh, polling units have uh, massive numbers. And uh, while we were coming in, we saw that uh, what, uh, uh, some of them, especially the polling units that have uh, large numbers, some of them were still counting. And you know that uh, election actually start, uh, stopped at around 2.30 or thereabouts. So, um, it took um, some, some time for uh, the polling units with uh, large numbers to conclude the, uh, the process. So right now, uh, I'm aware that uh, some polling units are still counting. And don't forget, like I said earlier, after they are through, they will go to the local government areas where they will collate. And from there, they will proceed to the INEX um, office here where we are... Uh, um, kind of waiting for what I have tagged, maybe the kind of the grand finale. Well, well indeed, um, TV3 uh, is the correspondent, Didi Olaniro. Uh, sadly, it's just much you can take, but thank you very much for your time. Thank you for your contribution. Well, for further analysis of today's election, TV 360's special correspondent, Deji Badimosi, joins us now. Uh, Deji, talk to us about some of your analysis of today's governorship election in Ocean State. Well, thank you very much, Adi. Well, this uh, election is more like a repeat election, repeat of what happened in 2018 when they had the last governorship election. But just before uh, we come to that, let's take a look at some of uh, the details uh, 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 people need to really understand about this election. Now, the number of registered voters for this election is 1.9 million. So one mil approximately 1,955,657 persons uh, have been registered, registered voters. But those who are eligible to take part in the election is uh, that's eligible now to cast their votes in this election, 1,463,000 1, Four hundred and seventy. Do not forget, you still have. Uh, I mean, this this number of people still have to go to the polling unit. They still have to get accredited. So at the end of the day, the exact number. I mean, the number of those. I mean, or those who would actually cast their vote will be those. I mean, voters now who have uh, their PVCs and have actually been accredited to vote in the election. Now look at the total number of local government areas in that state, 30, the registration areas, three, 332, and then the polling units, 3,763 polling units across the 30 local government areas in that state. And the number of candidates, of course, 15. But then, let me say this. Out of that 15 candidates, the race is considered a two-horse race, so to speak. It's between this man, Buega Oyetola, who is the incumbent governor of the state and of the APC, and uh, Ademola Adeleke, who, of course, is the candidate of the PDP. And that's the reason I said earlier that this is just like a repeat of uh, the 2018 general election, because both men were actually the front runner in that election and at the end of the day this man won uh, the race so we wait to see who would win the race this time of course uh Bwega Oyetola, the current governor is from Borukpe local government area and Ademola Adeleke is from Edenot local government area now you have three senatorial districts in that state 
uh, Oshun West, that's where Ademola Adeleke is from. And then you have Oshun Central, that's where the incumbent governor of Boigao Yetola is from. And then there's Oshun East. Do not forget, you still have, apart from these two men, you still have 13 other candidates who are taking part uh, in the race now. And of course, all of them are from different uh, senatorial districts. There are actually some of them who are from the same senatorial districts. Now, um, as I said earlier, Boyega Oyetola is actually from Oshun Central, and then Ademola Odeleke is from Oshun West. Now, 30 local government areas. These are all the local government areas, 30 of them. Uh, fact is that now, to win this election, to win this election, uh, a candidate, for a candidate to be declared winner, that candidate has to win uh, at least 20 local government areas. So you, apart from getting the highest number of votes, you must also get uh, one quarter of the votes. That's 25% of the votes in two thirds of the local government areas of the state. Two thirds of the local government areas uh, uh, in that state now is, uh, is actually 20. So uh, first of all, to be declared a winner, uh, the candidate would have to win, get the highest number of votes cast, and then get 25% of the votes cast uh, the votes now cast in 20 local government areas. So this is like a race. Uh, the first person to get the highest number of vote cast and then to reach uh, th those 20 local government areas. And something I should say, there's a possibility that uh, these two front runners now could actually get 25% in uh, 20 local government areas. So the decider will then be who gets the highest number of votes. And that's exactly what played out in 2018 when the governorship election uh, took place there. Uh, at the end of the day, there was a runoff. And in that runoff, uh, Boyegao Yetola eventually won. But then the margin was very narrow. He won by just 482 votes. So we don't know if there's going to be a repeat of that. We just have to wait and see. Uh, but from, from what we are gathering, this is definitely going to be a close race. Now, some key local government areas to watch. Uh, Oshogwa local government area, Ishokon local government area, Ife East local government area, Ayedade and Uriade. Now these local government areas have the highest number of, uh, I mean they, they, they are the most populated in, in that state and then they have the highest number of registered voters. So it's very key that uh, any candidate who wants to win, any candidate who wants to win this election must do well in these key local government areas, very, very well in these key local government areas. So that, that's just how uh, the, the race uh, uh, will, will unfold, but we'll just wait and see uh, what happens and who eventually clinches uh, the, the, uh, the, 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 the election now. But let me go straight away to uh, Oshun State right now, where we have Nelson Ekujimi, who is an election observer, standing by to talk to us. Uh, Nelson, thank you very much for joining us on the program. Uh, uh, first of all, tell us how the election has gone so far. <clears throat> well, thank you very much. The election has come, but it's not yet gone, because like your correspondent rightly said, in some local governments, particularly in Eden North, because I covered from Oshogo, Eden North, Eden South, and Ayedade, we had polling stations where the total voting population was about 8,076. That was in um, that was in open space in front of Bale Ilearani polling unit 04, Ologunwa Baki. The polling station had 1,076. Then there was also another polling station that has at three about 3:45 p.m. That's Eden South, Alajue 104, Anuolu Junction. That polling station had 1,800 plus votes. As at 3:45, the people on the queue still waiting to cast their vote were over 100, and the electoral officer for that local government had to come to that polling station and uh, with the technical officer, and they had to call for more uh, beavers machine so as to be able to speed up the process there. So, so in, essence, what, in essence, what you're trying to say is that, look, uh, election could still be taking place in some areas across the state as we speak. Absolutely. It's still going on in some places in the state, in some polling stations, because according to the Electoral Act, so long as you are on the queue, before the close of ballot at 2.30. Mm. Even if the voting had to extend to 7 p.m., you'll be, you'll be allowed to cast your vote. 
So now, long as you're in the queue. Uh, yes, the I understand. That, that's actually what the rule says. Tell us quickly about the BVAS uh, uh, system now. That's the biomodal uh, verification system. How has it worked? It has worked very well, but we had some little, you know, skirmishes in some places that some persons, the beavers, couldn't recognize their thumb and they couldn't capture their faces as well. Uh, in some places, they had to call for uh, the technical team who came and made the amends. Mm. But largely, if you look at how the beavers had functioned, it had functioned efficiently because the areas where we had the persons that this uh, machine couldn't you know, accredit were very, very negligible. In a police station of about, you know, maybe 300 to 500 persons, he could not recognize maybe three or five. So that was, you know, and there was no police station where the beaver's machine didn't function. So the beaver's machine has really done well. The only okay. snag that we have recognized now from this process in Oshu is the need for INEC to review the register for police stations and make sure that the decentralized police stations such that those police stations that are having 1,800, those police mm. stations can be divided into three or four so as to make the process smoother and easier for the electorate as well as others. I, I understand you. You could actually have voting units in those areas. Uh, Nelson, if you're still there, there's because... something I also want to ask you, something that uh, uh, you know people have been talking about now. Now, uh, if... talk to us about vote buying. It's, it's one issue that has come up in these elections. Yaga, for instance, said uh, it has observed uh, situations of vote, uh, vote buying in the areas that you, you uh, uh, went to, that you visited. Did, did you observe anything like vote buying? No, 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 no. There was nothing like vote buying. The, the undercurrent in the local governments where I went to were the local undercurrent in our politics where people feel that, oh, it is the turn of our son. Like I told you, I went to Eden North and South. And the message that, you know, you could feel, you know, reverberating around the environment was that uh, our local, our local, meaning it is our turn. And don't forget, the candidate of the PDP is from that local government. And I moved from uh, Oshogbo to Eden North and South, as well as Aedade. In Oshogbo, North, in Oshogbo and uh, Aedade, I didn't witness any report, any uh, incidents of vote buying. Though I, was, I monitored it also on the radio. And there were reports from some other places that, mm. you know, there was a voters inducement. But in these right. areas, it was more about the local undercurrents. All right. I, I guess the politicians would be very, very surreptitious about, about that. So they wouldn't do it in the open. Maybe, maybe that's the reason <laughs> why. <laughs> maybe that's the reason why you didn't see any. But Nelson Okujimi, thank you very much for joining us on the program. And thank you for the good job you're doing out there. We'll wait and see how uh, the election eventually pans out. Uh, so Shadi... Back to you now. Many thanks, TV3 Cisco Special Correspondent, uh, for that um, wonderful analysis. Thank you very much. Well, moving on, still in Ocean State, Nigeria Civil Society Situation Room has raised some concerns about the Ocean State governorship election. Speaking at a press conference in Oshun, the convener, Nigeria Civil Society Situation Room, NAOB, highlighted some of the gray areas that some of its observers have discovered in the election so far. We deployed across the state and a number of situation room members also went outside. So far, you know, we can say that uh, in terms of arrival of materials, a lot of the materials or INEC team arrived very early. In fact, even beating seven, before 7 o'clock, more than 90% deployment had uh, arrived its destination. And voting that, that allowed voting to commence earlier than the timing that was even given and so we want to commend INEC on that. For the security, a lot of the security presence were adequate. We, can, we commend the security on that and they behave professionally. Uh, the issue of vote buying, we can say, is still railing his head. Some of it openly, others are in a secluded way, you know, uh, and uh, uh, the security has not made any arrests. And that, that is one area that is a source of concern. They have been subtle you know, for that subtle way of vote buying. But we can say that we have enjoyed peace. We have not had any case of violence that uh, has been recorded. You know, unlike before the election, there were so many issues that were coming up. But we are happy to say, to report at this point, that there hasn't been a single case of violence in the election. 
Civic Engagement Organization, Yaga Africa, has threatened to expose those involved in unlawful practices in the ongoing Ocean State governorship election if the result does not reflect the wish of the people. Speaking to journalists at the organization's data collection center, the chairman, Yaga Africa Board, Husseini Abdu, says reports from the accredited observers indicted two major parties who were found to be inducing the voters and bullying them. Consistent with our observation in the Ekiti elections, Yaga Africa notes the significant improvement in the logistics management for the Oshun 2022 governorship election. Yaga Africa received and verified the following critical incidents report. One, voter inducement, or what we call bribery or vote buying. Yaga Africa received reports of act of vote buying perpetrated by agents of APC and PDP in polling units. In PU003, opposite Olomu Mox in Oshobo, a PDP party agent were seen handing, handing out between 2,000 and 5,000 to induce voters. Also, Indusu polling unit 003, Ward 7 in Orolu local government area, APC agents were seen distributing 4,000 to voters who voted for the party while PDP party agents were seen distributing 2,000 to induce voters. Welcome back. President Mohamed Obari has praised the effective use of the Treasury single account TSA by his administration, says, uh, saying it had helped in saving public funds from the reach of unscrupulous government officials. The president who spoke in Dara Kassina State when he received elected local government council chairman also expressed satisfaction that the agricultural policies of his administration are working to good effect. On his part, the Commissioner of Local Government and Chieftain C Affairs, Yao Uma Gogo Gogo, commended the President for initiating several measures to transform agriculture in order to increase farmers' income during the last seven years. Agriculture is a sector that every human being is on it. So that is why most of our time and discussion uh, align on that. So he is happy. And inshallah, we are going to mobilize people about this uh, policy. So in order for people to understand, to, to continue with prayer they are doing for him. And even we asked him, we, we told him that before he left uh, office, he, he uh, 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 make uh, a law that can uh, cover or give this policy a backing. Nobody, somebody, if he come, he will not tamper with it, especially uh, not allowing so many things from outside the country, especially rice, uh, cooking oil, and some other <coughs> essential commodities that we are using because we can farm them, so we can manufacture them, even in Nigeria. So we ask him to make a policy that uh, back this, uh, make law that back this uh, policy because we masses at the, on the ground, grassroots, we are happy on what is going on. The 17 years of relative peace and stability enjoyed by Liberians has been attributed to the sacrifices and gallantry of the armed forces of Nigeria. The Chief of Staff, Armed Forces of Liberia, Major General Prince Charles Johnson III, made this known while on a court visit to the Chief of Defence Staff, General Loki Irabo, at the Defence Headquarters in Abuja. In response, the Chief of Defence Staff, General Loki Rabo, said Nigeria prides itself in actively participating in the restoration of peace, law and order to Liberia during the period of the country's security challenges. Today, I will visit is a courtesy call to attend the 44th graduation of senior class in Jaji and to also pay a courtesy call on the Chief of Defence Staff to see the possibility of how we can work in the issue of contemporary threats we have in our region to see how best Liberia, the armed forces of Liberia, can tap on the expertise, the training that we have already received from 
your own food as well. So our reason being here is how best we can cement that time and how best we can benefit as we already have benefited from the Nigerian Armed Forces. And I know um, if we go back, we're going to definitely have whatever discussion on our own way specifically that we can tap on. But surely D is an honor. We remain solidly committed to the um, you know, training and of course capacity building issues that we have had to undertake. Beyond of course the military interventions and military support, uh, I'd like to also assure you that um, the political leadership and especially um, the commander in chief President Mohamed Ibrahim is highly committed in ensuring that not just the stability of the West African sub region, but the core, your country is in town. Skills acquisition has been proven to be the most direct way to tackle unemployment and empower youth to attain self-dependency. To this end, the Yes, We Are Winning Foundation has organized a symposium to commemorate the United Nations World Youth Day, Skills Day. The symposium, which took place in Lagos, provided a platform for dialogue between experts in various fields and the youth. Our correspondent, Simi Saladigun, tells us more in this report. According to recent statistics, the unemployment rate in Nigeria currently stands at 33%, up from 32.5% in the preceding year. This number is projected to increase to 40% in 2023, given the present state of the country. At this symposium, organized by the Yes You Win Foundation in commemoration of the 2022 World Youth Skills Day, young people gather to equip themselves with various ways of transforming their skills for the future. Leader of the Yes You Win Foundation says its major aim is to build youth who are determined to excel despite daunting political and economic challenges through various empowerment initiatives and career development programs. In the past two weeks now, before today, we had organized um, free training, online training for youth all over the, all over the country um, to acquire skills in digital marketing, content creation, um, event management, uh, project management, web design. You know, these are soft skills that youth can use to profit. You know, so um, we believe that in spite of the, in spite of the, on, the rate of unemployment in the country, every human, every every person has special skills, special abilities that can be unnecessary you know, for self-development and national development. Other speakers at the event charged the youth to take advantage of various programs which will help them quickly adapt to rapidly changing demands and equip themselves with skills for life. Look beyond those barriers. Look at the opportunities and look at how you can maximize them. The points where you decide that you are going to be positive-minded and then you are going to be resourceful with what is on ground is where you start to make out something from what you have. Speaking on the barriers standing between Nigerian youth and decent jobs, Adeshola Falai says youth must attain for job-specific skill acquisition to defy the odds, adding that education and training will help increase the chances of gainful employment in today's very competitive world. We need to take ownership of the choices we make and we need to be intentional. You can take a horse to the water, but you can't force it to drink. The young people have got to find solutions to those challenges. We can only advise. Those challenges will always be there. But guess what? It's those that find a way to overcome their challenges that will excel. So the tools that they need to arm themselves with are tools that will empower them to overcome the challenges, no matter what it is. For me, it is to seek to identify gaps, identify gaps, fill the gaps, and be the best in what you do. I said now that some youth are in high demand. They are rejecting jobs. It's because they bring something above board on the table. You know, so youth must stop playing the victim, must stop having sense of entitlement, and study, get that thing, that knowledge, that skill, 
that will be so much in high demand. According to the United Nations, the decade of action for its 2030 agenda requires the full engagement of young people in global processes which are vital to generating positive change and innovation in the world. Simisolajikun, TV360, Lagos. We'll take a break here, but still to come, Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman hits back at U.S. President Joe Biden after I confront Saudi Prince about Khashoggi. Details of the story and more rights after this break. Welcome back. Now here is a recap of some of our top stories tonight. The candidate of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, in the governorship election in Ocean State, Adimola Adeleke, has won his polling unit. Adeleke defeated Goiga Oyetola, candidate of the All Progressives Congress, APC, to win polling unit 009, Ward 02, Abogunde, and then North LGA. The PDP standard bearer polled 218 votes, while Oyetola, the incumbent, Governor secured 23 votes. We also told you that operatives of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission (EFCC) have arrested at least three suspects uh, for vote buying in the ongoing Oshun uh, governorship election. Some of the suspects were arrested around what two unit two in Felodon Street, Isale Oshun, in Oshogo, the state capital. Well, in case you miss any of our news bulletins, so for more updates, do log on to our website on www.tv36nigeria.com. You can also follow us on our social media platforms on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and Google Plus at TV360 Nigeria. On Facebook, we are TV360 Online. And in COVID-19 updates, federal officials have urged eligible Americans to stay up to date with their COVID-19 vaccines and boosters during a media briefing this week as cases and hospitalizations rise across the country. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, COVID-19-related hospitalizations have doubled since April and deaths remain at about 350 a day. The agency added that those 50 and older were fully vaccinated and had just one booster shot were four times more likely to die from COVID-19 than those who had had the recommended two boosters. The European Medicines Agency has identified severe allergic reactions as potential side effects of Novavax COVID-19 vaccine. The vaccine was authorized by U.S. regulators on Wednesday and its product label in the United States warrants against administering the shot to people with a history of allergic reactions to any components of the short shares of Novavax fell 20.3% to $55.72 in morning trading, along with the broader market and other COVID-19 vaccine makers. We'll take another break and return with more stories and business to stay with us. The governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Gordon Emiafili, has said, with the rising global trend of digital economy, the Monetary Policy Committee is expected to chart a new direction for the Nigerian economy. He said this in his opening remarks at the 2022 retreat of the NPC held in Lagos, where members convened to discuss monetary policy implementation in a digitally evolving, developing economy. He merely added that in the last eight and a half years, the CBN held implemented uh, the right monetary policies, which had seen Nigeria overcome recession twice 
in four years. President Mohamed Bari says Nigeria is better prepared to cope with disruptions in global agricultural supply chain prompted by COVID-19 and the Russia-Ukraine war. Buhari said this in a tweet on Friday. He said his administration's policies and investments have built resilience for the country's food security. In April 2022, Akiwumi, additional president of the African Development Bank, AFDB, said Africa must prepare for the inevitability of a global food crisis occasioned by the Russia-Ukraine war. Away from business now to the foreign scene, Saudi Arabia's de facto ruler, Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, has hit back at Joe Biden after the U.S. president confronted him about the 2018 murder of Saudi journalist Jamal Khashoggi during the meeting between the two leaders on Friday. In the meeting, bin Salman, also known as MBS, denied responsibility for the killing of Khashoggi at the kingdom's instable consulate. Biden said he uh, indicated that he disagreed with MBS based on U.S. intelligence as assessments. In response to Biden bringing up Khashoggi, MBS cited the sexual and physical abuse of prisoners at Iraqi's Abu Ghraib uh, prison by U.S. military personnel and the May killing of Palestinian American journalist Shirin Abu Akhe in the occupied West Bank as incidents that reflected poorly on the United States. On the spot and scene, Senegalese central defender Khalido Koulibaly has completed his move from Napoli to Chelsea for an undisclosed fee. The 31-year-old Senegalese national team captain joined the Stamford Bridge side on Saturday on a four-year deal. Koulibaly, Afghan 2021 winner, has already linked up with the Chelsea squad on the pre-season tour in Las Vegas, U.S. He is a second high-profile sign for Chelsea following Raheem Sterling's transfer from Manchester City. And that's the size of our news bulletin. Many thanks for watching. I am Fola Shadi Ogurinde. Bye for now.